me did a good sad anqua. Be frago ha, I go as an church mango. Now, may ye fool, may ye body fool. Madaroma, we were fool pa. Ya, may almost be a lini minaba queen yet. And so, the son said, Minty mint enough, but far from me, you'll be a mamma dear near dinty. But my home would take a crown, I'm only a fool. And this time, no, twenty sixteen, not by Bessia. Number my year for best at three hundred and fifty. And I'm a sad for fro, a car home, for from Donay, one fifty. It's one fifty more one, you ever catch him say, or baby bamboo. No, Miss Ong or Baz or Barbe, or Mosay, and this thing, and this in Nibifi. Dasso, we are so fear for penny. You will see, I was on Metro Mefu. I must ah, or be one nine, and my Metro Mefu go for, and you may need play papa, papa. And yes, I'm going to an American. You put my Akuma Quebby and Nuns at your son's song, the beginning of a phone tata 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 mucha, none of the no massa papa, and then me dear me out papa. The story of Akusia Dankwa defines the state of Ghana's agricultural sector before the end of 2016. Under the previous government, Ghana's agriculture was in a state of decline. Prior to 2017, the performance of the sector had been erratic, recording a growth rate of 0.8% in 2011, one of the lowest in modern times. A 2.9% growth in 2016 told no better story. We met a sector which was underperforming, with one of the lowest agricultural productivity in not only West Africa or Africa, but the whole world. We have yields which were very very low and we are talking about across board. We're talking about food crops, we're talking about our famous cocoa, we're talking about tree crops. The yields were very low. Farmers like Akusia Dankwa had their livelihoods taken away and neglected. Their Greek ministry itself was abandoned. You look at the budget, the percentage of the budget which went to agriculture also was going down going down to the extent that by the time they left office, it was less than 1% of total budgetary allocation was into this ministry. It really showed you that although they were, the rhetorical was very, very loud, oh, farmers are important to us, but in reality, nothing was happening in the sector. Having effectively diagnosed the problems of the sector, President Ekufadu took the decision to do everything possible to put agriculture back on the path of transformation and work towards harnessing effectively its potential. To you, the students, make full use of your time here so that you can have a productive future. And the investment that is being made to you here to prepare you to play an, a leading role in the development of Ghana's agriculture. Seize it with both hands. There's a large future out here and you can play a very important role in that future. The launch of the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative in April 2017 strongly signaled government's determination to reverse the flagging fortunes of the sector. Under the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative, several other programs have been realized to transform Ghana's agriculture. Within this first term, the Planting for Food and Jobs program resulted in a sectorial growth rate from a low 2.9% in 2016 to 6.1% 6 in 2017, the first year of its implementation. By the end of 2019, it had grown to 6.9%. On the ground, government initially supplied 216 pickup vehicles to extension officers and district directors of agriculture. 2,700 agri extension officers were immediately recruited, with some 8,000 graduates for the Feed Ghana module of the NAPCO program. These extension officers, moving from community to community, have been charged with educating farmers on improved methods of farming. Before then, we were having only five AEs, five food officers, which two of them have even retired. But for last two years, 2018, we had up to 70 AEs. That, that was addition of five AEs. So now we have a lot of field officers to reach every farmer within the district. 
provision of improved seeds and subsidized fertilizers has largely accounted for high farm yields and impressive growth of the agricultural sector over the past three years. Well, of course, you can be whatever you set your mind to. Mama, I love when I tell Mama I want to be the president. <laughs> Come, let me tell you a true story you can tell your friends when they laugh at you. Once upon a time, there was a small boy who watched his father and uncles start the struggles that eventually led to Ghana's independence. And you know what the boy learned from the struggles? No. Persevere. Perseverance. It means never giving up until you have achieved what you set out to do. So when the boy grew up, he became the Secretary General of the People's Movement for Freedom and Justice. And do you know what he did? Because he believed in Ghana and democracy. He persevered until his movement brought down the military government in 1978. Really? Really? When he saw that there was no justice for Ghanaian, he led the Kumipreko demonstrations for human rights. He persevered and persevered and mobilized Ghanaians for multi-party democracy, which was achieved in 1992. Wow. And then, in 2008, he stood for Ghana's presidency, promising free SHS and industrial transformation. Did he win? I don't have the free SHS. No. He lost this election, but he won people's hearts. Did he persevere? Yes, but that is one quality people admire in him. So, he stood for the elections again in 2012, and again, he promised free SHS and industrialization. And this time he won. No, they lied about him. They said you burned down the country that he's fought all his life for. That doesn't sound like him at all. You are right. He lost a disputed election and took it to court. When he lost in court, he accepted it in peace. He may have lost the election, but he won more hearts. Oh, I hope he pressed Of course he did. He ran again in 2016. And this time, he, he won! won! And Akufuadu became the president of Ghana. Yay! And do you know why he became president? Because he... Pre Persevered! Rompa, won the dear president. Everything is possible. Hi, my name is Salamatu. Yes, these are both me. You see, before free SHS, my life could have taken two very different paths. The SHS path depended on how much money my parents had, what sacrifices they were willing to make, and whether they would send me or my little brother Isa to SHS. The other path is what would have become of me if there was no free SHS. But today, thanks to free SHS, my future is bright and promising. Congratulations, you have a name. It's a boy. Instead of depending on others, I will stand on my own feet and help my family. Free SHS is where my dreams for a better future and the dreams of thousands of young girls become a reality. Don't let NBC take it away from us. Vote for NPP and give all Ghanaian girls a chance for a better future.
In a drought from so in the Central Central District of the Ashanti region, this 400-acre corn farm is being harvested mechanically. Thanks to the provision of the improved hybrid seeds provided under the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Um, I started this farm about 15 years ago. But in fact, this is the first time that I'm having this bumper harvest because of the help of the um, government, PFNJ. And the corn you see over here is a hybrid, a special maize. And uh, this was provided by um, MUFA. And um, they, they've given me a lot of assistance. This president has contributed a lot. I started this farm 15 years ago. I didn't get this help. In 2020 alone, this farm is producing over 35,000 bags of maize per season, feeding Ghana, supporting poultry, and creating jobs for the youth. The, the Nairi, who is the overlord of the Maposi, when I visited his uh, palace the last time I was in the north, he said to me, this is the first time that he's seen new maize meeting old maize. In other words, traditionally there's a gap of no stocks in the household for maybe two, three months before the new harvest. It has been given a new face, and I hope the next four years you'll be <laughs> to be uh, something phenomenal. Through his regular working visits across the country throughout his first term in office, the president has personally been on the ground to inspect works done on these farms. His regular engagement with farmers and stakeholders has added value to Ghana's agriculture. Government introduced greenhouse villages to offer opportunity for the youth to be trained in intensive vegetable cultivation using modern technology. Three greenhouse villages have been established at Dowenya, Akumadan and Bodjasi. Sefi in the western north region is one of Ghana's cocoa growing hub. In the town of Esam and in Suakrum, cocoa farming is what has kept these communities going over the years. <laughs> Koko si sambro ne bechi yekuku no. Ema yekuku ne yali esi mu. Nti first ni yati yati miya twenty bus. Ewi yati yati ten bus. Enya bi. During the Mahama-led government, cocoa production began to decline from the height of one million metric tons. It was by far the biggest drop in cocoa production on record within the past two decades. Oti huwa ube use koko nuwana na ewu kwa. Nuwana ne ewu. In their scramble for a solution, the NDC government chose to distribute free fertilizers. However, the record showed that despite such policy, cocoa production was in a yearly decline under his administration. Instead, a thriving fertilizer smuggling enterprise was created. Hundreds of thousands of bags of fertilizers were smuggled to neighboring countries where they could sell on the market for profit. Oh, how dear, a be for instance, in Ghana, we were, our yield for cocoa was only 450 kilograms per hectare. In Cote d'Ivoire next door, they were doing 1.1 metric tons per hectare, which is more than twice what the Ghanaian farmer was doing. Today, the implementation of various programs such as replanting, mass spraying, fertilizer application, hand pollination, mass pruning, and cocoa farm irrigation are all intended to transform Ghana's cocoa sector. The Akufuado government 
maintained the producer prices in the preceding years, despite a 40% decline in the international prices of cocoa which occurred during those periods. The current producer price of cocoa, which is 515 Ghana cities per bag, is the highest amount ever paid to cocoa farmers. Since 2017, a new dawn is breaking in Ghana. The NPP is building the foundations for growth and transformation. We are curbing unemployment with new and decent jobs. Thanks to Nana, I've got a new job through NAPCO. That is why I'm voting for him at the MPP. The promise of free SHS is now a reality. Through education, I have a brighter future. That's why I'm voting for Nana and the MPP. The future of our country is in the hands of a competent leader, a man you can trust. I trust Nana. This December, let's protect our progress. Let's give Nana four more to do more for you. 2020, 2020, four more for Nana. Many farming communities across the country may boast of the overwhelming success of the Planting for Food and Jobs initiative. But the people of Agogo and the Ashanti Achim district of the Ashanti region are even singing a louder song. This plantain market in Agogo is overwhelmed with harvested produce. For the first time, traders here export plantain to Ghana's neighboring countries, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Togo, and Niger. People are coming all the way from, uh, from Kano to come and take our maize, and our farmers are taking initiatives from Agogo, uh, uh, plantain farmers setting up shop in Buakadugo, in Burkina Faso. I mean, it's amazing how things have changed overnight. Guys, this year, na. But <laughs> At the end of the year 2018, we had 133,000 farmers over participating in planting for food and job. 2019, our target was 160,000 farmers. But at the end of the year, 
we had 257,000 farmers plus. So you could see it's more than triple jump. So we realized that in the region from 2017 up to 2019, there has been exponential growth as far as planting for food and job is concerned. I said, When hard-working Ghanaians deposit their life savings in the bank, they trust the bank to keep it safe for them and their children. And they trust the government to supervise the banks and protect Ghanaians from fraud and thieves. During John Muhammad's term, he and the NDC government failed to protect Ghanaians. Many lost their life savings and some of those closest to John Mahama were the prime beneficiaries. Don't worry brother, keep them under control and I'll keep getting the money. Today, the NPP is paying back all the depositors who lost their money and cleaning up the mess NDC left behind. If you can't trust them with your money, how can you trust them at all? This December, vote NPP to make sure that your hard-earned money is protected. Hey. Hey, <laughs> DKM ne god is love. I will go 2015. And another car will be to your money. So, what's it? 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 it? What's 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 it? A four minamia, a four, a yammy papa four, a branami yakolan, mita ebejano, a four more hassi. Sableno, nay or my penuco four, a blesso. Na coco nursery, and a spray, and no more than free. Na, mamma, men so, Nancola, or one more training so, and you know so, a free. Say, yes, ye are here, not health insurance, so, nay a co hospital, so free. Did not a brabono, not a mere my empire. And since I am and this year by and by. Now, Yari, I woke up more from San Bruno, ye jay cha. And he says, Sidney's no more than my own mother, my ya. Yari and one and I, you dear, and to me, I had you my home. A blabon mu by yet thing. And I'm so ma, me papa cra, a free mu. Sabron sooner a brown, no more ye, jay chessa, or semi co secondary school. Nan so, and I'm a hunter in Tino, man to me, and to us. I want to run my margin, sir, me conquering. Every 2017, a man paying a coffer to buy him, or the a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a
ye twa ye kokko nu a e ka mienu ne fa bia no e wo mpatasi kan so a wo de ema ye it is asia de e de ni jesu nkon bi abe she me mu a kokko adwuma no eno ana asia de me ye no tu kwen enam na na akofo adu ne she she pa wo de ama kokko akua fo nti no ye beto aba abo ye mpuntu ho ban na ma ne mfie nan e de aka ho ama na ye bebre ama kokko akua fo The story of Rahina to Karim, a young rice farmer in Tepa, in the Ahafwano North District, is further testimony to the new breath of air in Ghana's agricultural sector, where the youth are developing interest. Na minimum mi kunu mumu na na eye, na ni enim ajume na ni so, ti eba ni ato piti ni enim bonso ene adi adi. Na mi didi mama mi kunu onde oya se onde onti mi nye. In spite of the planting for food and jobs initiative and with support from a Greek extension officers providing improved seeds, Rahina today harvests 17 bags of rice per acre on her two and a half acre farm. The plants of food and jobs on the buyer me year first year no, me nya seventeen bars for one acre. And my manager, I'm catching me kunis ah. I feel the manya mo no onji mini. Tina me mane be bobo ya for be farm ono. Ede ko ma onu we muse manya bi. Until twenty seventeen no, I'm a me ah me jirem hu. Eh yeah, until me buy scanner no. Now me jirem me hu di me discanner me nya kakra no me debe ye. Now me year first year me better abobo ya ma me kun. Until twenty eighteen. Apple, na me tow abubu ya ba akunde ma me kuni. Nti October 2018 na me sa tow abubu ya ba akuma me chiri ba oto sumbi. Nti 2019 na me tow prot na me chama blocks we guso. Nti ama me nya just say we sa afa kwa me afa na ba ba nwe dri ane kwa ngamu kofi me ba kwa me besa me kofi entem. Just say ma me dobi. Papa Dobi, my children are Dobi, my children are me and Sad Dobi, and now I am a top boy at Mano, so on us we cry Dobi Monubi. Tina na wa boye pa, wa boye. I was here to abam Mano. We are planting for food and jobs to buy ya. Me timi aye, a Japadi a. I told me I want mama me and son. Me aye Japadi a mama me Mano. Me ni misu abu so, e di bin so aye a defu Francois e chesa. Me jeni di, na na baye. President Akufuado's strategy of linking agriculture to industry under the One District, One Factory program and others are being aggressively pursued. The bumper harvest during his first term in office is testimony to how leadership of service can transform Ghana's agricultural sector. For now, the inspiring story of Rahina and many other farmers is giving hope for a brighter future.